Hello, my dear friends, Dr. Davaner, your ENT faculty, and my friend, Dr. Azam, anatomy faculty. We bring to you a beautiful clinical integration of anatomy and head and neck nerves. And the first nerve, Dr. Azam will talk about facial nerve. So facial nerve actually comes out. It exists out from the stylomastoid foramen. After coming out from here, it pierces through the parotid gland in between the superficial part and deeper part through the patis plane. And then it will be dividing into the five terminal branches. So sir, during the parotid gland surgery, how to save the facial nerve? The beautiful question is the surgical landmarks for the facial nerve during parotid gland surgery. Number one is tympanomastoid suture. Number two, posterior belly of diastric. Number three, tragal pointer. And number four, retrograde dissection from the branches to the main trunk. Lovely, sir. And sir, followed by that, marginal mandibular branch, like out of the five branches, marginal mandibular branch will be supplying to orbicularis oris. Any clinical importance of this one? Sir? Absolutely, sir. The salivary gland surgery of sublingual gland, for example, for the stone or the tumor, when we do that, this is the most commonly injured nerve. And unfortunately, if the nerve is injured, the clinical finding will be dropping off angle of mouth. So to save this nerve, we should always start elevating the skin flap once we are deeper to platysma. Lovely, sir. Now moving on to the next nerve, sir. Great auricular nerve. Yes, sir. The most favorite nowadays of the examiner. Great auricular nerve will be originating from C2 and C3, sir. And then it is going along with the external jugular vein. And then it will be supplied to the skin covering angle of the mandible along with the lobule of the ear. Or you can also say lower one third of the auricle. Sir, any clinical importance of this great auricle? Absolutely, sir. When we are dealing with the case of pleomorphic adenoma of the parotid gland and we plan for parodectomy or superficial parodectomy, we give modified Blair incision. Mm -hmm. Now, when you give this incision, the great auricular nerve is very likely to be damaged. And the complaint to the patient after surgery is that I have got anesthesia of the lobule of the pinna on that side. And one more important thing is that great auricular nerve is a very favorite source of nerve graft in case of facial nerve grafting procedure in trauma or tumor cases sir. lovely sir i do remember one more thing sir fray syndrome yeah in fray syndrome the nerve that will be damaged will be auricular temporal nerve yeah. and then while regenerating it is most commonly joining with great auricular, great auricular nerve, nerve. wonderful sir sir in thyroid surgery one of the most controversial question among the students which nerve is most commonly damaged the answer to this question is number one is the external laryngeal nerve or the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve okay okay the second common is right arlen the third is the left arlen. I know it's contradictory. People think left arlen is more commonly involved. But if you talk about thyroid surgery particularly, the right arlen is more commonly damaged than the left arlen. So why it is so, sir? Actually, what happens, sir, right arlen is more superficially present in the tracheoesophageal group. Yeah. That is one thing near to the lower pole of the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. And second thing is the variation of the anatomy. Actually, the inferior thyroid artery jo hoti hai, in the near the lower pole of the thyroid gland, there the nerve will be either superficial to that one, deeper to that one, or sometimes what will happen, there will be like non recurrent nerve also in yeah. Because of these variations in the anatomy, the surgeon will be actually getting confused and that nerve will be most commonly damaged in the right sense. Absolutely, sir. So, you said in the sequence that ELN is the most commonly nerve which is damaged. Mm -hmm. So, if it is damaged, what are the consequences? My dear friends, if you remember the famous statement, all intrinsic muscle of larynx is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve, except cricothyroid, which is supplied by external laryngeal nerve. Unfortunately, cricothyroid is gone in this case. And if you remember laryngeal anatomy, cricothyroid is the main tensor of the vocal cord. And tensor gives us quality of voice. So the most important problem will be the poor quality of voice. And if patient of thyroid surgery was a singer, he is going to sue in the court for sure for this. No, sir. That is like well explained, sir. Very clear thing. And now, suppose if both the RLN are damaged. Yeah, that's a disaster. You know, it. if both RLN got damaged during thyroid surgery, only one muscle is working now. And that's cricothyroid again. And my dear friend, cricothyroid, in addition to being tensor, it's an adductor also. Only one muscle left, cricothyroid, and that's adductor. Both cord will come in the midline and that is called bilateral abductor paralysis of the vocal cord which is immediate post-operative airway emergency and you will require urgent tracheostomy right in the operation theatre right after surgery is over in this case and patient has to survive this for 6 months and later on if no improvement happens then we go for the type 2 thyroplasty. Lovely sir, I hope that is very clear now. 
and uh, i hope that sir suppose if i am uh, assisting you during the surgery as an anatomist let's save the patient together <laughs> <laughs> and our students are also going to save the patient definitely. definitely all these are important questions for your different exams like neat pg next upcoming examination inict and of course fmg examination also keep learning guys